Let us see the summary of the poem, The Tale of Melon City by Vikram Seth. Once there was a city which was ruled by a king who was impartial and calm. The king decreed that an arch be built across the main road of the city so that all those who observed it would be enlightened. The arch was built and the king rode down the road under the arch. Unfortunately, the arch was built so low that the king's crown was knocked off his head. The king was angry, unlike his placid self, and ordered that the chief builder be hanged. But as he was led to the gallows, the chief builder shouted out it was the workmen who were to blame. The king considered this and declared that in all fairness that the workers must be hanged. But the workers in turn shifted the blame onto the masons, claiming that the bricks were of the wrong size. The frightened masons blamed the architect. The architect summoned before the king neatly turned the tables and reminded the king of a small fact. When the architect had shown the plans to the king, the king himself had made changes to them. The king was furious upon hearing this, but decided to seek advice. He asked for the wisest man in the kingdom to be summoned. The wisest man, so old that he could neither walk nor see, was carried to the court. On being asked for advice, the wisest man responded that it was the arch's fault. Since the arch had knocked off the king's crown, the arch must be hanged. But when the arch was taken to be hanged, a counsellor declared that it would be shocking to hang something that had touched the king's head. The king agreed. By then, the crowd watching this spectacle was beginning to get restless. The king sensed this and anxious to pacify, the crowd decided that guilt could be established later. But someone had to be hanged immediately. So the noose was set up somewhat high and each person was measured. Strangely, only one man was found to be tall enough to fit the noose, the king himself. And thus, by his own decree, the king was hanged. The ministers heaved a sigh of relief. If someone had not been hanged, the people would have rebelled against the crown. But now, the ministers had to find a new king. Messengers were sent out across the kingdom, declaring that the first person to pass the city gate would choose the next ruler. And it so happened that a simpleton passed the gate next. When he was asked to name the king, the man who loved melons answered the question with his standard response, a melon. And thus, a melon was crowned the king of the city. All this took place years ago. When questioned about their choice of ruler, the people of the city merely regarded it as tradition, not anything unusual. The claim that it doesn't matter if the king happened to be a melon as long as he lets them live in peace and liberty. The poet concludes sarcastically that laissez-faire, where the government does not interfere in the lives of the people, seem to be a way of life in that city. Thank you.